If you drink beer, and you probably do, because statistics tell us that more people are drinking beer today than ever before, you probably do your drinking in surroundings something like this. Pleasant, friendly, and relaxed. These people are drinking beer too, but in completely different surroundings, in a controlled scientific atmosphere. This room is the end point in a chain of study and research that sets out to maintain and, if possible, improve British beers, whoever brews them. The brewing industry set up its research foundation nearly 25 years ago. It's housed in this elegant old building, Little Hall at Nutfield. The Research Foundation's aim is to help brewers make the most of their basic raw material. Homegrown barley, hops, and yeast. For it's only by understanding more about raw materials like these that we can make the best use of the world's natural resources. The members of this tasting panel are drawn from the staff of the Foundation. Nearly 100 scientists and technicians. Tastings are made regularly, and the results carefully recorded and assessed. An opinion of a particular brew is very much a personal matter. The taste profiles, as they're called, reflect this variety of subjective impressions. The beers evaluated here come from British and foreign breweries, or they could have been brewed in one of the two miniature breweries run by the Foundation. Brewing on this scale allows a wide variety of beers to be compared in as economical and controllable a way as possible. This brewery is exactly duplicated, so that brews which vary slightly may be made and tasted at the same time. The process carried out here is identical in all respects with that carried out at a normal life-size brewery. First of all, malted barley, which is just barley which has been allowed to start its germination or growth process in what are called maltings. Hops, which give beer its characteristic bitter flavor. This essential ingredient of good beer has been grown in Britain for 500 years. Nowadays, the hops are cut and stripped by mechanical means. And then there's yeast, the tiny living organism that is related to the yeasts bakers use to make the dough rise. Carried out on a large scale, brewing looks like this. First, the malted barley is crushed in mills to give what is called grist. The grist is fed into large clamash tuns, nowadays more often made of stainless steel. Here it is steeped in hot water for several hours to produce a liquid called wort. The exact temperature and time are of vital importance to the brewer, for here the malted barley gives up its sugars, on which at a later stage the yeast will do its work. This critical stage in the brewing of beer has been deeply studied at the foundation. The glass column shows the scientists exactly what goes on inside a 5,000 gallon mash tun. From the mash tuns, the wort is run into coppers. Now the hops which have been dried and compressed into sacks or pockets, are put into the copper. Steam pipes will boil the liquid until the desired amount of bitter flavor has been imparted to the brew. After cooling, the hopped wort, as it's now called, is passed to the fermenting vessels. Here, the yeast will work, sometimes in open tanks like this, or more often now, in closed vessels. The yeast converts what would otherwise be a nourishing but rather sweet and tasteless soup into a sparkling beverage which can be kept for many weeks. So important to brewers is yeast that the Research Foundation have undertaken to be curators of the National Collection of Yeast Cultures. Here they collect, catalogue and care for the many hundreds of strains of yeast. Not all of them are used in the brewing industry. Each sample is kept in ideal conditions, in three separate containers, one of which is stored in another building, just in case of accident. Every strain of yeast has to be regrown, or subcultured as it's called, every six months. 
a laborious and time-consuming job. So now other ways of storing the specimens are being developed. Keeping the yeast in a state of suspended animation by freeze-drying is one of the most promising. Freeze-drying is already widely used by industry as a safe and efficient means of food preservation. The Foundation has on hand other research work whose value and importance extend far beyond the brewing industry. Each tiny grain of barley carries within its shell a store of energy to sustain it from the time it starts to grow until it can put down roots. So the scientists at the Foundation looked inside the barley corns to see just what happens when the growth process starts. Through the microscope, they can watch the cellular structure of the starch inside the barley corn as it progressively breaks down during the early stages of germination. A little later on, a few hours in fact, each one of these grains of starch will have been changed into sugars of various kinds, the sugars that are needed to brew the beer. Work carried out at the foundation led to the discovery of a simple way of accelerating these changes, and so of increasing the yield of sugars. This machine is just a prototype, but the work being done here may well find application throughout the world. Many experimental brews are made in the Foundation's breweries, and they're stored as they would be in the pub for tasting and testing at a later date. The wide range of skills and equipment at Nutfield is at the service of brewers from all parts of the country. And the knowledge gleaned through painstaking research is for the benefit of all. Routine analysis of samples for comparison is carried out by the latest automatic techniques. This multi-channel analyzer can handle up to 60 samples per hour, save much laborious routine work, and record the results. In contrast, a simple mechanical device pours four bottles at identical rates, so that a visual assessment of the properties of the head can be made. The main concern of the Brewing Industry Research Foundation is to help British brewers ensure that their beer is as near perfect as skill can make it. The industry still brews from the same traditional materials as it has done for centuries past. Homegrown barley, hops, sugar and yeast. But today, brewers have the advantage of one additional ingredient knowledge. Scientific knowledge, based on the work carried out here by the Brewing Industry Research Foundation, one of the foremost brewing research establishments in the world, to the benefit of brewer and customer alike. Yes.